Good morning. Uh, we are so thankful to be here with you, Epworth. Um, we're sorry that it has to be virtual like this, but uh, you guys are a huge part of the work and the ministry that we're doing in Liberia, and we're so happy just to be here to share a little bit about what's happened over the last year, year and a half, um, and uh, just also happy to be home and with our church family here. Hello, hello. Yeah, you don't have it. Okay, so I'm just going to skip over the slide pretty quickly because you guys know who we are. I'm Nathan, and this is Anna, and uh, we have a passion for agriculture and our faith um, and our God, and um, we uh, sought that intersection, and we found it in our ministry um, in Liberia. Um, and uh, for the next slide, um, so it, those of you that I want to remind you that, that don't remember, Liberia um, was founded by sleed, freed slaves in the early 1800s. Um, in that way, it has a very interesting history um, and connection to the U.S. Um, its population now is uh, 4.7 million, um, and uh, it has um, it, it is in the bottom 10 poorest countries. Uh, in the world, unfortunately. Um, over 70% of its food um, is being imported right now, and that's hard to believe, even for us, because it doesn't look like it. Um, but beneath all of the, the markets and the things that look like it's local, it's, they're actually stemming from imported food. Um, so they need help providing for their families, providing um, for their children to eat. Um, they're, they've been devastated by a civil war, and, and as soon as they were getting up off their feet, um, Ebola was also hitting, hitting them as well. Uh, and uh, so they've had a lot of struggle over the last uh, 20, 30 years that has, will have an impact um, over the generations to come. And, uh, um, and we can see that day in and day out. Uh, Christianity is the major religion um, in Liberia. Um, however, it is mixed with uh, tribal religions and tribal thinkings that um, sometimes uh, go into uh, devil worship and other things like that. So um, we see an interesting mix of those religions day in and day out. Uh, we're there in Liberia with Hope in the Harvest, Missions International. Um, Hope in the Harvest uh, envisions and co is committed to agricultural and personal transformation, and we do that through uh, teaching biblical principles, management principles, and new technologies all together as one um, with the hopes to see that transformation um, in, each and in each and every individual that we come across. The way in which we do that, um, Anna and I, is through the Agriculture Research Center, which you can see in the picture there. Um, we teach agriculture classes, um, and by the way, this is on the Liberia International Christian College uh, campus. Uh, we mentor agriculture businesses, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, we do some administrative work for the college and for the university. Uh, we lead uh, daily devotions um, or help to implement those and encourage others to lead those. Uh, this, this year, we focus, um, more recently, we've been focusing a lot on work and what the Bible says about work. We also do outreach with farmers. Um, we are in the city of Ganta, which has about 50,000 people in it, um, and is already considered to be rural, but as you go out, there are more um, rural cities, more rural towns and villages, and we do outreach to the farmers that are there. Um, and we also just are part of the community there in Ganta, royal community, um, making friends, um, going to church, and, and being part of that, um, that community there. Okay, so since it's January, I know a lot of us are still probably trying to reflect on everything that happened last year, thinking about all of our plans for this year. Um, and so, you know, as we've been reflecting back, um, I wanted to hear from you guys, what has your 2021 been like? Uh, what is a word that you would choose to describe 2021? I've got a couple of people in the audience, so hopefully they'll give me some answers <laughs> that we can go off of. Test? Test? Depressing. Depressing. Anybody else? Terry, you got one? Frustrating. Frustrating. Okay, yeah, I think I can relate to a lot of these, and I think a lot of us can relate to these. 
Um, so as I've been thinking about ours, um, this is the word that came up. Fire. Okay, so fire, as we all know, can have a lot of different connotations. It can definitely have the negative connotation. It can have some positives. So in terms of negative connotation, you know, it can mean devouring of something, the end of something. Um, it can mean, um, you know, frustration, like we've been describing. It can mean death. It, and then when we look at the positive side of things, it can, you know, it's used in the Bible a lot to talk about the sacrifices that are being offered up to God. They're being consumed on the altar before the Lord. Fire can also represent God's power in the Bible. Um, power can, or fire can also represent the light of Christ and the power of God coming down. So this word fire has encompassed a lot for us this past year. And I'll start out first by talking about some of the fires um, I'll say that we have walked through. I don't know if I'm using this thing correctly. There we go. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to look at, you know, on the other side of this, that these are refining fires, really. You know, as we sung about earlier, they're hopefully, you know, fires that we're walking through and that, um, you know, might bring some light at the end of the tunnel. But while we were in it, to be honest, in 2021, it didn't feel like that most of the time. If you read our newsletters, you've probably seen about some of the things that um, we've dealt with over this past year and a half in ministry. This was definitely one of the hardest um, years that I think we've spent abroad. So right when we got back in uh, October 2020, we jumped into a really short semester uh, because COVID had closed down all the schools there. We can't do virtual schooling in Liberia. So we jumped into a really quick short semester. So that was like jumping right back into the fire of things in Liberia. Um, also, as you guys know, the same thing back here, COVID shut things down. Um, a lot of people struggle with depression, loneliness, isolation, challenges with getting from here to there. In Liberia, in our town uh, in particular, we struggled with uh, closed borders. And like Nathan said, a lot of our food is imported. So um, we struggle with those types of things. Um, you can see in the picture there, maybe some of you guys remember from our newsletter back in April 2021, we woke up on April 1st and our van was on fire. People were outside of our window at midnight shouting fire, fire, fire. And so that was just like a really terrifying experience because in Liberia there is no fire department we can call. There's no one that we can um, ask for help. So it was all on us to try and figure out how to put this out. It ended up burning up our vehicle and a friend's vehicle as well that night. Um, we had some funding crises in the middle of the year, probably also linked to COVID and everything that was going on back here in the US. Uh, during that funding crisis that we had, um, there was an issue with our generator that broke down. And our generator provides power for all the classes, but also uh, for the medications, for the animals, and all kinds of things that we need on campus. Um, so that was a really stressful situation. Um, there was also some instances um, with the chocolate business, people, you know, as things start to uh, develop and grow, people in the uh, Liberia tend to have um, issues with jealousy. And so there were some really harmful accusations that were made to people that we love in terms of this whole um, chocolate business thing. There was also some, obviously, some relationship strain from that um, that was hard to walk through and deal with. There's always, every year, cultural misunderstandings and issues that we have to walk through and stress that comes along with that. Um, there were quite a few motorcycle accidents. Liberia has a, one of the highest death rates for motor, motor vehicle accidents in the world, but this year there were some things that touched um, really close to home. One of our teachers on campus, who was a beloved member of the community, um, he actually died in an accident right on front of campus there. And then one of my students um, was in a uh, motorcycle accident where he went head to head and his helmet shattered and we were visiting him in the hospital. Um, so that was also something to walk through. There was a lot of sickness this past year, particularly for myself. I had COVID twice, I had malaria a couple times. And so walking through that, um, you know, when you're far away from home, family, all those things, those are struggles. And then lastly, you know, going back to this idea of fire there, we had a lot of friends whose children were just physically burned in fires this year. Everyone in Liberia cooks on a coal pot. And so we had a lot of friends whose kids got their whole bodies, bodies burned by fire. Um, we had friends who lost infants and babies at very young ages, which was really hard to walk through that uh, with them. And then we even had a friend 
whose house was set on fire because of jealousy in the community. So when I think about 2021, this year was definitely um, a year of fire, and it felt at times, um, you know, when we were there, I was wondering, you know, where is God in all this? Where is he? Um, but, you know, when you step out of a situation like we've come back to the U.S., it's, it's easier to kind of process and look through things uh, through a different lens and a different light. And uh, we read that verse from Isaiah um, earlier today, which I think you can see up here again. Um, it's Isaiah 61, uh, verse 3, I think, to 6. So it's, it's talking, Isaiah's talking about, you know, he's prophesizing about when Jesus is going to come back and he's going to change things for the Israelites, who at the time were definitely walking through a season of refining fire. So he was talking about how when this Messiah comes, he will come to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. So there's a lot of reasons I really like this verse, and since I've been home, I've been going through Isaiah, and this verse really stuck out to me, um, especially as an agriculturalist. Um, because the idea of exchanging beauty for ashes is something that we see all the time, actually, in Liberia. So, like I said, everybody in Liberia does cook with a coal pot. So that's just, you know, a little pot where we have coal underneath and they're cooking their fire. Um, and at the end of cooking each day, we have these ashes. And typically, um, people will just scatter those out and do nothing with them. But in the agriculture sector, those of us who are focused on farming, we like to gather those ashes and keep them in a bag until it's time to plant. So Liberia has very acidic soils. And some of you might garden here in the U.S., so you might know about how acidity affects your plants um, when you're about to plant things. So if it's very acidic soils, it's going to be very hard for the plants to grab the nutrients that's in the soil. And it might even burn the roots so that plants can't do well and thrive. But these ashes that we collect from the fires that we use to cook, or whatever fires that are lit in the, um, in the forest, or fires that come up as a result of accident too, these ashes, when they're placed in the soil, they help to neutralize um, any harmful bacteria, they help to neutralize the pH, they help the plants to get nutrients so that they can thrive and survive after an incident of fire. The same thing happens in wildfires we see out in the West. Wildfires are sometimes part of the natural ecosystem of the way things live and thrive. And so this idea that we can have something beautiful after a fire, after ashes have been made, is something that I have the joy to see every day in Liberia as we literally plant fields. We scoop the ashes into our hands and we place them in each hole as we're going out to plant. Um, so thinking about this idea of beauty for ashes in my own life and in our own ministry and everything that we've experienced, we've been able to reflect and see um, not entirely all the ways that some of these fires are going to work beauty for ashes, but we have started to see some of the ways that the Lord is working um, through these different refining fires that we've been walking through this past year. Um, so just to start, some of these things are what, you know, the plants, the oaks of righteousness that we see starting to spring up from the dust. Um, you know, personally in my own life, God has been working to help show me different areas where I've been, been depending too much on myself um, for strength to get through some of these difficult times, and he's inviting me to come back and lean onto him. So I know for me that's been personal growth as we've walked through these fires. Um, and then you can also see some of the things in the ministry here. So we had a visit from the president of Liberia, he came and visited the school because he heard about all of the amazing work that was going on at the agriculture college and at the chocolate business. And that was really good um, publicity to keep, get things going. There was also a grant that we won for the chocolate business that Nathan's going to talk a little bit more. Graduation, which I'll talk about in a second. We got a new Jeep um, thanks to donors all throughout the world. Once we spread the need, people donated and helped us to get a new Jeep which is even bigger and newer than the one we had before. So it allows us to carry more materials when we go out into the bush. It allows us to carry more people when we go out to do ministry things. Um, the new generator that we got, we got through a trade because we didn't have any cash at the time. So God provided that um, for us, that we could make a trade with another organization we knew. 
Uh, we've got some new hires at the Agriculture Research Center. Uh, for the longest time, it was just Nathan and I and a lot of part-time teachers, and now we have three full-time teachers who are followers of Christ and are investing and mentoring into our students. We've got some of our students who just graduated, who we hired, who are making an impact. Um, we've got new board members. We've had baptisms. You can see the top two pictures there are Thomas and Emmanuel, and then Jerry also got baptized this past year. Um, we baptized them in our tilapia ponds that we cleaned out <laughs> for them to uh, be dunked. And then, you know, there's some new businesses starting up with students who are super excited and encouraged by, um, you know, their friend who's doing a business. They're starting to believe that things are possible to change in Liberia. And we've got a growing population at LICC, which means more students to be able to minister to, mentor, and share the gospel with. So these are all things that, as we reflect back, we can see how God is working and bringing beauty um, from these ashes. And we're praying that these people that we see in these pictures here will be firm, planted oaks of righteousness in the future. Um, we've also, oh, I think I went a little too far. Okay, so as I said, um, graduation is one of the most exciting things that happened this past year. It was da in December, um, so right at the end of when we were coming home, but this has been something that I personally have been really invested in as a teacher and as the department chair for these students. Some of them, I've walked with them for the past four or five years since they started their degree. And this was our first ever time to graduate uh, students with a bachelor's degree. So it's been a long process of getting the approvals, getting the classes, getting the teachers, getting the students. And um, we just celebrate with you guys that we were able to graduate 22 um, students with bachelor's degrees going into agriculture. And we have some pictures of them here, uh, some of the ones that I just wanted to highlight. So we've got Peace at the top there. So Peace is a really sweet um, and energetic young lady um, she's very well poised, and she cares so much about children. And she was hired recently to go work at a school where she's going to be teaching agriculture and investing in kids. And we interviewed her and a couple of the students um, after graduation about, you know, what did you learn from LACC? What was beneficial for you? And in the video there, she talks about how one of the things she learned from LACC was how to put Christ into everything. Um, it's not just something we do on ch at church on Sundays, but it's part of our everyday life. It's part of the classroom as well. And then we've got Ezekiel on the um, screen there at the bottom. And he uh, was the number one student in the entire school. And he came from the agriculture department. And he also, um, you know, when we talked to him and asked him, what are the things that you're going to carry with you? out into whatever job you're going to next. He talked about, you know, in the Farming God's Way that we teach, like Nathan touched about, how we talk about Bible um, management keys and agriculture keys. One of the things we talk about a lot is what can you do with what you have in your hand already? And he said he learned a lot from that because in Liberia there's a lot of people who are sitting and waiting for someone to give them something, for the government to give them something, for an NGO to give them something, and waiting um, for something to happen. But he said... Now I know how to identify problems in my community. I know how to figure out how to use what little thing I have to build it and invest it and grow it for the kingdom of God. And then we've got uh, Mutari on the left there with the bright orange shirt. It says Roots. And he has also been hired out by another organization. He's going to be an extension agent for farmers. And I really wish that you could meet all of them, especially Mutari, because as soon as you meet him, his smile and his laugh is infectious and contagious. Um, but if you do want to get to know a little bit more of our graduates, I have little profiles of them all online if you'd like to um, get to know them a little bit more. Yeah, so one of the things we talked about and you can see on screen I'm about to talk about is that we get to mentor businesses. We uh, firmly believe that um, Christ needs to be involved in all aspects of our life, and we know that business and the economy is a huge aspect of our life um, here and the same in Liberia. Um, the way that we get to be involved in that is through um, the creation of new businesses, which is really what we see Liberia needs. Um, they need more jobs, they need more business, and they need Christ. So putting all those things together, 
um, we were able to work with some uh, students, current and former students, to help them create a uh, chocolate business called Redemir Chocolate. Um, they saw a need, a need to make business, a need to, of course, um, provide for themselves, um, a need to help their country, and, and they wanted to do it. And um, Anna was teaching uh, chocolate making in her processing and preservation class, and uh, they said, can we make this into a business? And it all started from there. Um, the cocoa sector is broken, um, and Joshua, um, I wish uh, we could uh, play the video here, but it's, uh, it's hard to understand him a little bit, but he talks very um, clearly about it if you, can, if you can understand him, and he knows that the cocoa sector is, is broken. Um, it is uh, uh, full of people producing cocoa, and then that cocoa immediately going out of the country, and um, no extra value added, no jobs added, uh, nothing, uh, anything else above just producing the cocoa. And so uh, Redemir envisions uh, being a part of the redemption of the cocoa sector. Uh, and uh, they envision a vibrant cocoa sector full, um, full of jobs and uh, chocolate making and other value added processes like chocolate making. Um, so over the last year, uh, you heard Anna say that they've, uh, they had a visit from the president um, they've been increasing the number of products that they're able to provide. Um, they've started doing their own separate devotions, separate from the ARC, the Agriculture Research Center. They've moved off campus to their own, um, their own area. Um, this past year has been full of growth um, and full of challenges as well. And um, also Joshua and his team, um, Kona and Biao, are also um, owners and then one of his technicians is, uh, her name is Sunday, um, another uh, uh, youth. Um, and she uh, and Joshua applied for a grant, um, were shortlisted for it from 150 applicants down to 10, went through a six month process of doing professional development um, and the learning about how to do a business pitch and preparing for a business pitch competition, sort of like uh, Shark Tank. In fact, we showed some videos of Shark Tank so they could understand what, what, what they were going to be up against. Um, and uh, we were uh, so thankful, Joshua and Sunday were so excited to have been one of the five um, that was awarded in the end with the grant, um, $40,000 for the acceleration of the business. And uh, I just want to share, it's a little bit hard, it's a little bit chaotic, I apologize for the poor quality of the video. Um, but I, I do want to share this video because you can see the, the pure joy um, coming from um, Liberians that are from the bush and didn't ever think they would be in this kind of position. The wrong hours, the last winner of the night, we call the stage Redemir. So I hope you were able to see that a little clearly. Um, uh, sorry for the poor quality video, but that was Joshua and Sunday hugging each other and other friends that they made in the process, jumping up and down, um, just smiling ear to ear. Um, pure joy, and uh, I think you could hear me, um, unfortunately, sort of giggling in the background because I was so touched um, in, in my heart as well. Um, it was, a, it was a pleasure to be able to watch that, and now they know the challenges moving forward and, and using, um, being good stewards of what God has provided to them. Uh, another way in which I am also involved in mentoring business is um, through the Agriculture Research Center, um, and through LICC, we are trying to start a, a chicken feed business. Um, it's mostly me working alongside Christian, which is in the all the way to the right side of the slide in the peach colored shirt. Um, Christian, as you can see, is another young man. And um, uh, we enjoy, I, you know, that's a, uh, something that seems to come up all the time is that we work with youth and they are the future of this country and I'm trying to empower them and encourage them. And um, Christian has a lot of, uh, a very bright future ahead of him. Um, 
It started in 2019. We were obviously having chickens of our own and making feed for ourselves, and we knew the challenges of doing that and the challenges that feed and the cost of feed and the quality of feed um, presented to uh, the poultry industry. Um, and uh, it was inhibiting and not going to allow for jobs to be created and, um, and value to be added. Uh, and another uh, organization, another mission actually that has an, uh, an orphanage and a, uh, a school that has a poultry to feed lunches to their children, um, they were struggling to find good quality feed that was at a um, decent cost. And so they asked us to, to make their feed for the next month. And uh, we, Christian and I looked at each other and we said, okay, we think we can do it. Um, but we knew it was going to be hard work because at that time everything was pretty much, a lot of things were done by hand and the one machine we did have was not very good. Um, and it was a lot of work and Christian has stuck with it for almost three years now. And um, it's growing. We've had the, the blessing of also um, being provided a, a, a grant through LICC and through um, uh, uh, organizations, UNDP, um, and so uh, we're, we're getting more development, more, uh, um, more machines for th that business as well, and um, same along the lines of what Redemir is doing, we're, uh, the, the idea, Christian's idea, is that we want to be able to build a platform. The business is simply a platform for glorifying God and showing people Christ and, and directing them towards Him, um, and so that's, that's what we hope. That's what we envision for the chicken feed business there at the Ark. Um, we want to say thank you to Epworth. Um, thank you to all the individual people at Epworth that are, we know there's plenty of individuals that are, that are in the Epworth family that are supporting us. Um, Epworth uh, itself, um, the Thrifty Penny, and we want to say thank you to the, uh, the uh, um, missionary care team that has been meeting with us and encouraging us and um, providing us a little taste of home um, through Zoom um, over the last year, year and a half. Um, it's a uh, true blessing to have you all in our lives um, supporting us and this ministry uh, would not happen without you. Um, we know that this, this ministry is, is backed by a family um, centered around God. And uh, we are so thankful for that. Um, we want to continue to invite you to um, partner with us through prayer. Um, think about potentially visiting us. We love having visitors and sharing in the ministry that way um, on the ground. Um, coordinating and sending supplies. We're thankful for um, a lot of and overwhelmed by all the supplies that are being sent um, recently in the last few weeks. Um, and uh, sharing our ministry, uh, about our ministry with someone who might not know about it. Um, and then uh, we're also, we're very thankful that uh, we are um, about 90% um, financially funded um, for this next year. And, uh, uh, but we want to invite if you um, want to pray about it with uh, your family, if you could become uh, financial partners with us. Uh, we do have openings for uh, um, 25 or 50 dollars per month or, or anything that you can think of and um, monthly financial partners is the most sustainable way to support us but um, one-time donations are highly welcome and important to us as well um, uh, if you want to see what's going on or keep up with us um, we have our blog at Glens Go Global um, and that's where you can find information about partnering with us financially or find ways in which you can pray for us and pray for the ministry and pray for people that we love and we work with over there in Liberia. Um, you can also go on the Hope in the Harvest Facebook page where we post videos and pictures and um, we really get more interactive with how things are going and what's happening um, within the week. Um, you can go to the Hope in the Harvest Facebook page. Um, and Anna, you want to talk? Yeah, so to, um, this time coming back from Liberia, we actually had some extra bags um, that we were able to bring with us. And so we were able to bring back a lot of chocolate because I know you guys were begging us for chocolate last year and throughout the year. <laughs> um, so I hope we have enough to meet the needs. Um, and then we were also able to bring back some really cute um, 
African fabric like purses, duffel bags, um, earrings that I don't know if you can see on Zoom that I've got. Um, so all of those are for sale right now. I think Kara sent out an email blast this past week with a link. We've got pictures of everything in an order form, so you can just click and say, I want this many chocolate bars that are peanut, this many that are ginger, I want this set of earrings, I want this purse, and then we can um, just fill your order. Um, so I encourage you guys to check it out. Um, they'll probably send the link out again this week. Um, but I would encourage you also to try and place your orders quickly because we are going to be visiting a lot of other churches in the next month. We wanted to make sure we gave Epworth the first shot at all the stuff we brought back. Um, so go online or you can even swing by uh, today at the church. Nathan and I are going to be here for about an hour or so after church because some people have already placed their orders. They can come and pick them up. Or if you just want to come over real quick and see the stash that we have, you can feel free to come. Uh, for like an hour after church. So hope you guys can make it. So just, uh, uh, we're finished. We're, we're thankful. and uh, But we, we want to just pray with you, if that's all right, um, real quick. And so let's, uh, let's go to God. Oh, Father, we're thankful. Um, I know Anna and I are thankful to be here, uh, to be with our Epworth family. We're thankful, Father, that we get to talk about um, your word, that we get to talk about fire um, today. Father, uh, we just, we ask, Father, that um, you would help us to uh, stand on your promises as we go through fires. As, and Father, we just ask that uh, if you provide the fire that um, we could provide the sacrifice, that if you could provide the fire, Father, that um, you would refine us Father, um, we're so thankful, Father, that we can um, stand on your promise that you work all things, all things for the good of those who love you um, and those that are called according to your, your purposes, Father. And um, in that promise, uh, we'll wait expectantly, help us to wait expectantly for you to turn um, ashes into beauty, Father, and for us to see oaks of righteousness. We thank you, Father. We love you. Um, we're just thankful. Um, we're thankful for your word. Uh, in your son's name, amen.